Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Williams. This is the progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, conservative, or otherwise, you get to air your point of view. Remember, you can also send me a tweet to E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S, that is, at Egberto Willie. Let us engage. It is politics done right. One, two, three, four. Welcome to Politics Done Right. Hey folks, we are going to have a hell of a show today. Today we have, we're at Café Artesano. Señores, salud a Café Artesanos. You know folks, let me tell you one thing. This is very important. Uh, we told you that what we were going to do with Politics Done Right was one of several things. What we said we were going to do is we were going to make sure and bring the community into Politics Done Right. And that is exactly what we're doing. Bringing the community into Politics Done Right. Right now we have uh, some fairly new immigrants with us, specifically from uh, Venezuela. They are, uh, we're going to talk about uh, Chavez. We're going to talk about um, Nicolas Maduro. Uh, I, I can imagine that you already know that if they are here, they are like likely not pro they're likely not chavistas they're likely not in favor of the that governmental type is that correct am i saying that right yes but i am in favor from venezuela not for uh, once someone is from venezuela i'm favor right for you are for venezuela estas para venezuela you yes are? yes oh. i am for venezuela so we're not representing any, any specific yes. political party, of course, not with the regime, yes, not of with course. Maduro, Chavista regime, but not also in the name of any of the opposition parties. Yes. Right, well, you know, that is a good thing. I, I, I kind of believe, to, to tell you bluntly, I think if we here in the United States as well would kind of get away from the factionalization that you have with parties, that we would probably present a better politics. Because before we got into the show, I listened to both, uh, both of you. And I mean, I, uh, in, in as much as you guys know that I'm generally left of center, I found that you guys uh, are maybe a bit right of center in, in your ideology, but you really understood and, and know what you want for Venezuela. Am I getting that correct? Estoy correcto con yes, eso? totally. Totally. Absolutely. Yes. Eh, es una de las cosas que nosotros queremos es el bien de Venezuela. What she's saying is that we definitely want what's good for Venezuela. Yes, of course. Eh, el personaje que maneje eh, el futuro de nuestra nación tiene que ser en coalición con todas las fuerzas. And, and, and what she believes in, we, we all know here that uh, the, the narrative that comes over here is that uh, Chavez is for the people. You know I've adapted some of that narrative as well. And what she's saying is, don't look at, at in her regards, she believes in the people as well, uh, maybe just a different way. No, hay, hay una, the narrative eh, outside Venezuela and also inside of the narrative that Chavez trying to install right. is that, that there is a people on the right that is the enemy of, of the people and the enemy of the government, of the Chavista government. But in inside Venezuela, we are not really far right or right or left. Yes. It's regular citizens that were exposed to an polarization that Chavez created, not maybe created. Of course, there was a situations, problems in the country, but he just exacerbated those problems in a narrative of the good and the bad. And me and my people is the good ones. Everybody against me is the bad ones. So, and those are the right, and the right are, you know, enemies of the poor. And, but all that was a creation. It was artificial. What you're saying it's not, that's and, not and the way it really was. And then it came like a strong propaganda apparatus that yes. Chavez uses the money to try to influence everywhere, including the U.S., including you, left activists in the U.S., and that you easily bought a story that make good sound with your belief, and yes, the, the rich are, are against the poor, and 
but that's you don't see it that way I, t I tell you what yet, before we got in before we decided to uh, or rather before I wanted to get deeply into the topic of Venezuela there's a few things that I wanted to bring to the audience that that we that we have right now and so what I'm going to do is this is going to be American uh, presidential politics for about five minutes or so and then we're going to go in detail into Venezuela I'm going to ask some questions as far as what you think about Venezuela and also and think about this uh, what you think should have been done to prevent a Chavez coming into power because I have I happen to believe that the same thing that brought Trump into power is similar to what brought Chavez into power so let's let's think about that but folks before before we get any further into the program on Venezuela what I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about is uh, the, the current state of the Democratic uh, the Democratic primaries um, we, we currently have a whole lot of folk that are in in the debate as you know the truth of the matter is most of them know that they cannot win and what I want to do is I want to play for you uh, something on Michael Bennett I want to warn folks we have to be very careful with who we are supporting as candidates because some do not have our welfare at hand. So take a look at Bennett and then we'll take it on the other side. So let's go ahead and go with Bennett and take it from there. If you want to see exactly why we are in the condition that we are in right now, Democrats either appeasing Republicans, appeasing the corporatocracy, but really not looking out for the people. I want you to listen to this in detail, folks. Some are talking about Medicare for all. Would you support that approach? I, I don't support that approach if what you're talking about is the legislation that Bernie Sanders has in the Senate. That would take insurance away from 180 million people who get it through their employer, 80% of whom like it. It would take insurance away from every labor union in America that's negotiated a health care plan, and it would cost $30 trillion. I have a bill with Tim Kaine called Medicare X that would create a true public option for the American people. This gives the American people a choice. It doesn't force them into plan. It gives them an option and it, uh, it creates competition for private insurance starting in rural areas, as I said. I think that's much closer to where the American people are than wanting to have the government take over the entire health care system. Dr. Kamal, Michael Bennett, Democrat from Colorado. We could remove a Democrat from Colorado and put in right-wing Republican from Colorado. Every item that he said why he's against Medicare for All is the same argument Republicans use against Obamacare, against the Affordable Care Act. Government takeover of the healthcare industry, losing your health insurance from your employer, labor unions losing their health insurance. I mean, I sat this morning, I was on the... 80 million people is what he said. Yes. This guy just, in effect, told Americans that Bernie Sanders and all these other people want to have government control of your health care. Now that becomes a an ad from a Democrat who goes out there and says, Medicare for all, government takeover of health care. And that becomes an ad that a Democrat said that. It is shameful. Once again, we are guilty of stifling ourselves. I think the centrist Democrat too often Republican like exactly they too often play to this mythical base they want you to say something that you don't mean mm -hmm. because these people want to be taken care of they want health care but they want you to say that I'm not for Obamacare I'm not for Medicare I'm not for Medicare right for all it's shameful that the United States supposedly the most advanced country in the history of the world is doing kindergarten health care is is doing kinder if you want to see exactly healthcare. why we are in the condition well, that we're we are in right again. now we democrats either appeasing again. republicans appeasing the corporatocracy there we go okay let me let me ask you a few questions because this is important uh, and this is not specific to venezuela uh, or, you guys are from a country that had socialized medicine is that correct Yes, uh, historically Venezuela have had a public ser uh, health service run by the government and also private sector. We have had both. Yes. Actually, no in in the health system, whoever that shows up receive attention. Okay, let let's stop right there. 
This, uh, let's forget about Chávez for now. Olvidamos de Chávez por ahora. Antes de Chávez, before Chávez, tenían también uh, salud pública. Por supuesto. Había una salud pública mucho mejor de la que actualmente hay. Okay, so what she's saying is that, yes, even before Chávez, before the, the takeover by the Chavistas, Venezuela, a country that many people like, like Panama or other countries, yes. many people would like to consider third world, you took care of your people, correct? Yes, yes. Yeah, go ahead, Mildred. Bef uh, before. You speak Spanish if you want. If you want, you, I'll, I'll, yeah. you can speak Spanish. Uh, antes de, uh -huh. de Chávez, nosotros teníamos, es más, los eh, hospitales pilotos uh -huh. eran públicos. Eso se hizo en, a, en la llamada Cuarta República uh -huh. y previo fue el crecimiento con el boom petrolero. Lo primero que se hizo fue eh, crear los grandes, las grandes instituciones hospitalarias en Venezuela. When, the, when Venezuela has been, was discovered to have a whole lot of oil, one of the things that they, they took care of immediately was to create a a whole lot of a, a great hospital system a public hospital system for everybody yes um, the democracy in Venezuela started in 1958 with the government of, yes. of Acción Democrática very good president as Romulo Betancourt Romulo Gallegos Raul Leone they created a whole national health care system right and a national educational Education. system uh, so it was education and health has been always for free in Venezuela, uh, very good in the first 25 years after 1958. After that, about 1980s, the healthcare system and everything else We started having a little decrease because of corruption, because of people not because of the system itself, but because not of because of the, the system, corruption. because of corruption, because the the second generation of politicians in the democratic and uh, you know the different parties just became corrupt. Venezuela had a lot too much money coming out of the, the oil, oil, mm -hmm. and those all that money was handled by governments with not good crystal clear controls so they started stealing and making stealing a way of living for politicians and because of that the services run by the government started decreasing quality but the narrative that Chavez created the uh, public health care system or educational system that's BS. That's just for the public. That's propaganda. What, what, what Chavez like did. Under Chavez. What Chavez, Chavez did. Like sí, él sí. comenzó el, su su idea fue He's de crear centros de atención primaria. He thought that he was going to create primary care facilities. Eh, que el, los barrios no tuvieran que ir a los centros grandes hospitalarios, sino que pudieran acudir a estos centros de atención en cosas menores y no eh, crear eh, co, eh, en, eh, en los grandes. En, en los grandes. In other words, uh, what she's saying is what what Chavez did, did at that time was create a whole lot of satellite uh, facilities and invested in satellite facilities for primary care, but never did the necessary investment in the big hospitals where where major things. Occurred. La idea a lo mejor no es mala, pero no funcionó. Entonces se invirtió un montón de recursos en esos centros y se dejó de invertir en los grandes hospitales que realmente daban atención a los pobres. And she said that interestingly the the the, the primary care facilities in the uh, barrios or wherever didn't do as much as the big hospitals uh, did for the poor. So in effect it was defeat it was a the defeat in the purpose of, of what he was doing. Yeah, he also he did that he, those were called uh, barrio adentro Mm -hmm. So it was. Also, oh, I, I used the right word when I said barrios. Yes, okay. that's yes. the way we call to the lo low income uh, areas. So barrio adentro was mm -hmm. good. A very weak point that is related to to having control of the Cubans is that instead of using Venezuelan medical doctors that we had plenty, he started bringing medical doctors from Cuba. All right, let's. Uh, I, uh, I got. And, and the other thing he did with education was even that we had a national uh, education system, mm -hmm. he just started changing the names. Well, Chavez was a magic changing names. Yes. <laughs> so uh, we had the, the you know, public 
a school system mm -hmm. he he called it no now it's going to be the bolivarian school system and he started just changing the names of the schools but it was the same schools it just propaganda <laughs> schools and because of and then uh, yes there was now a closer uh, health attention in barrio adentro but with a cuban and right. the cubans N not not talking bad about Cubans, good friends, actually the Cubans we met here in the U.S. They just, they brought socialist medicine. That is, for every disease you had, the white peel. So they have a few, few options for whatever they were treating. It, their level, it was not the same as the national public health care. That we was very up to date in technology. Cuban healthcare system is very back on technology. Okay, um, but uh, l let me just for warn you about one thing, and that is, Cuban doctors are generally pretty good. Yeah, because they They're, work with they the very, very few resources. Right, they have they, very they, few. Re and they you know, because big, they were they sent to Angola and they were sent all over yeah. the world. Yes. Uh, and 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 there's pretty good research that they do. I mean, they don't have the resources, but they do research. They, they work hard, but that yeah. is, it, something is that you work with your heart, and something is that you have the technological you need, yes. right. resources. Okay, um, let, me, let me break for a minute here, and what we're going to talk about now, uh, and going back. You notice this, this was because of uh, Medicare for All that uh, we, we brought this, this segment in. What I want to I wanna get you is uh, to Elizabeth Warren and uh, how she confronted John Delany for wanting to not do what he should be doing if he is, intends to run for president. And then we'll officially get to the Venezuelan part of the conversation where I want to hear the history and how we got here. But let's go ahead back to Elizabeth Warren and there's a reason to the madness. Pocketbook issues that matter to hardworking Americans, building infrastructure, creating jobs, improving their pay, Thank you, creating universal health care, lowering drug prices. Senator we Warren. Can do it. You know, I don't understand why anybody goes to all the trouble of running for president of the United States just to talk about what we really can't do and shouldn't fight for. <laughs> in Washington is corruption. It is giant corporations that have taken our government and that are holding it by the table. Pocketbook issue, pocketbook issues that matter to hardworking Americans, building in. The reason I wanted to get that little clip in there was because we have a presidential election right now in, in Venezuela. They had one last year, uh, last year or two years ago. No, the no, one last it's year not was uh, yes. Yeah, but, but you did have one, right? No, we don't have. No, we didn't. Because uh, if si you no asistes a una elección uh -huh. y no estás de acuerdo porque te están es eso no no puede ser una elección válida. As you can see, my, my friend Mildred, and you know you know what I, I realized we started our program and I never officially introduced both of you to the program. Um, Folks, that is on my part, but this is sort of a, an impromptu thing that we're doing here. Uh, John and I decided we're going to have a program at, at his coffee shop, but uh, he called me up just last night and I said, hey, why don't we do it today? And we kind of stumbled into it. And we made it. And we made it, didn't yes, we? Yes, and thank you very much for the invitation to Politics on Right. First of all, I love the name of the program. Because on, with all the mess that we have had in Venezuela, Mexico, Spain, the U.S., that people is rejecting politics, I am for sure that rebuilding politics, rebuilding the image of the duty of the public service is the way. So I love your name, I love the invitation, and I brought Mildred, that is that. Uh, and know, who are you, you, Mildred? Gracias. Tell me, who are you, Mildred? <laughs> Tell us a little bit about you. Ok, yo soy una venezolana She's a que Venezuela. ama profundamente su patria. That loves her country eh, very much. Soy abogada, She's egresada de un, la principal universidad pública de Venezuela, la Universidad Central. She graduated from a public university. Eh, she's trying to let us know that she's not, the, or try to make us believe she's not the Venezuelan elite running from Chavez. <laughs> no, estoy muy orgullosa de, haber, de, de haber estudiado en mi Universidad Central eh, y saludo a todos los usevistas desde aquí. She's, she's who are you saluting? 
eh, saludo, oh, saludos a, a, a los sucevistas de, oh, de people coming que vienen de la universidad. That went to study to the high defense <laughs> institute of the country. It's yes. like going to Fort Knox and graduated from a master in national defense <laughs> and a PhD <laughs> on national defense. Candidate in, in Venezuela. PhD. Congratulations. So, so she is very aware of the military mm -hmm. effect and, and component in the Venezuelan politics. Well, I'm I'm impressed. I am very <laughs> impressed. But let's let's now now that we have it. And and, and uh, John, you just kind of doing a lot of talking, but you didn't really tell me who you are. Who I am? I don't really know, my friend. <laughs> who are you? I'm a person looking, searching for freedom and searching for happiness. Yes. And that's what we are here for. Uh, I tried to do that in Venezuela. I fought. 10 years making part of political parties, making part of a non-NGO. And you're, you're actually somebody who knows Guaido, the, 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 oh, the yes. associate president of... Uh, the interim, the interim, interim president. president. Yeah, yeah, it was part of, of the starting times of the VP party, mm -hmm. the People Wills party is the name. And Juan was a young guy coming out of university and being an activist. And we were part of starting that political party. That was an emergent party. The original idea was to fight versus Chavez and versus socialism. When we say socialism, I know it's very different meaning to what you guys want to create about so what socialism In really other words, is. it's not what Bernie or Elizabeth is no, talking about. No, I understand about, yeah. that what you guys have here is people thinking in the common good and in, in developing right. everybody. Yes. Socialism, the Chavez way is confiscating every property of the private sector to control the country. Which you have and, personal, and, uh, you, it, that personally affected you. Oh yes, right. uh, I, have a, I had a business that first Chavez did is controlling exchange. You right. cannot exchange local currency versus dollars right so I was I had the representation of the motorcycle brands from Austria right so I, I couldn't continue importing motorcycles and the second uh, but I could I, I used to continue doing it on the, with a black market right dollars and then he just banned the imports of motorcycles because the other militars and 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 his friends wanted to start importing motorcycles and by themselves right and the, so they took over that private market and took your shipment your yeah, big I, shipment. i had to close my business because i was banned to continue in business because chavez people chavez thought that that was a very good business for his friends right well uh, you know folks i like to hear all sides everybody here know that that uh, a lot of us on the left have sort of a a soft spot for what Hugo Chavez intended on doing. And in fact, you and I, John, have gone over uh, many times what Chavez have done, uh, good and bad, because I, tell me something good about Chavez. I don't know, man. Had a very no, good for, no, curve I'm ball, curve no, ball. Yeah, no, no. I mean, no, really. No. Okay, en, al, a, en, al principio, o sea, eh, yo pienso que él eh, tuvo, quería hacer cosas buenas He para el país. Yo no puedo eh, pensar right. que todo fue adrede para destruir un país. No lo, no, no me lo imagino. I don't think that anybody would want to destroy their own country. Eh, había muchas cosas irregulares en Venezuela. Había, lo, era muy difícil acceder a un crédito en, en el momento in bancario. A lot of difficulties in Venezuela. Eh, las tarjetas de crédito en ese momento estaban al, con unos un, intereses eh, altísimos. Eh, había créditos que tú eso no es antes de eso era antes de antes Chavez. de Chávez. So there were a lot of there were a lot of economic problems within the country. Uh, pre Chavez. La parte yeah, the, access, the access to financing right. for normal citizens was very different. Right. Yes. Sí. So, so, and one of the things that I've constantly said uh, in, in, in a lot of these countries where we get some 
crazy person and well i don't want to call chavez crazy or or oh, Trump ahead, crazy. Fr- i, I don't would like that it. but no i can't do that that's not <laughs> that that would kind of mess with the image but but um just like we got trump there are reasons why we got trump as well and that is if there are some there, if there are issues and problems in a country like mildred has just said it leaves the door open for somebody to say only i can solve the problem which is what trump said and to many times what chavez has said as well yes totally i i, I bueno. before we ha- before chavez we had 40 years of a bipartisan right like here two right. parties right so these two parties were exchanging the power one to the other in general they were both like like the u.s maybe it was a system mm-hmm. democratic and republic they were controlling the country and the first, as I said in the beginning, the first 20 years were great. After they 58. really built a social, economical system. Uh, they had like uh, technical skills schools. They had uh, health care. They had everything. And Venezuela had a lot of money coming from, from uh, oil. So they had money to finance those services. Mm-hmm. After that, after 1980, starts things started getting very bad. And those next 20, 18 years were bad. I, w- I was about to say terrible, but terrible is what came with Chavez. <laughs> no. So let's, let's by, by that moment, these bad, we years are, these bad years are not yet Chavez years. These are before Chavez. Okay. Before so Chavez. What before. we thought was bad was before Chavez. Okay. And then the election that Chavez won, the only three candidates that had an option to win were outsiders. It's a, imagine that in some election in the future, the Republicans plus the Democrats together, they get only 4% of the votes. Right. Imagine that the other candidates, three new candidates were all outsiders. Not from the two parties. Not from no. the two parties. That's what we were so upset with the bite the, these two parties that we were looking for a new comer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the newcomers were an entrepreneur, Enrique Salas Romer, a Miss Universe, <laughs> Irene Saez. She only got a little bit there. And the military, right. Hugo Chavez. So Chavez got 54% of the votes, the entrepreneurs, 46% of the votes. But we were so upset with the parties, with the politics, we wanted an outsider like you guys here voted for an outsider right. donald trump we wanted something new the problem was that this new guy that we brought was worse than the other two together so what the, that situation that chavez narrated as the very bad situation that i'm solving right now things after chavez are terribly worse and worse than that thing that we thought it was bad Okay, now here, here's a, a question, and this is rather important. Um, how much? Uh, I know th- things went down real badly. How much of the negative effects of what the United States have done to when Chavez came into power? Because Chavez was never a friend of the United States. Is that correct? Depende, como lo veas, porque el primer socio comercial que Venezuela siempre tuvo ya tenido hasta ahora es Estados Unidos. She's saying uh, uh, depends. Mm. Uh, when I asked if Chavez was a friend, she said depends because remember one of the biggest commerce that they have with is currently with Chavez. Y más I mean, with, with, with el, Venezuela. El único país que pagaba el petróleo uh-huh. era Estados Unidos. Era, era Estados Unidos, o sea que eh, cuando uno dice el socio comercial es tu amigo, pues entonces Estados Unidos realmente era el amigo porque era que daba el dinero. United States was always friends because well they were buying the stuff but again uh, I don't think the United States was happy that Chavez got elected pero eso no afectaba porque no afectaba en nada porque las políticas seguían dando de so that, fueron matter, 20, son 20 años uh-huh. you, I think it was what we call the microphone politics okay you know uh, uh, George Bush was saying Chavez is evil and Chavez was saying George W. Bush Mr. Bush Danger were right. evil because those speeches were good by the internal audience. Right. But in the practical is, I sell you oil, you buy me the oil, you send me your And daughter, everything is normal. Thank you very yeah. much. And But something important that Miller said is that after child with his, his populist politics or trying to help everybody, 
uh, I'm buying. Should he have tried I'm, to I'm help every? Friends. Wait, wait. Should he have tried to help everybody? Yes, I'm buying yes. friends. Okay. So he he invented Petro Caribe, and right. he invented that he was gonna uh, you know, give away oil to Trinidad, right. give away oil to Cuba, to Cuba. give right. away oil, and then he got a friend with. Uh, Amanideya, Iran, yeah. and then he became a friend of China. He became a friend with Russians. But all this oil that we were delivering to the Caribbean countries and China, they didn't pay. They didn't pay cash. They sent bullshit. They sent whatever mm -hmm. that Chavez said was important. Uh, Iranian cars. So okay. Trash cars are everywhere As in Venezuela. Exchange. In other words, they, they, they bartered. They yeah, because he thought more in, instead of capitalism, he thought in exchanging, el right. trueque. Right. So, but the only cash came from the U.S. So the U.S. always, in, in, in the practical point, it was our best ally. Right. It was just blah, blah, blah with Chavez. Y una cosa es eh, no querer eh, demonizar al a Chávez o al, al, al movimiento chavista. No, ese no es el punto. We're not trying to demonize the Chavista Solamente movement. tenemos que ser objetivos y ver. But we need to be objective to see ¿Qué es lo uh, que tienes? what really what what really came about. Now what according to much of what I've read, okay? And much of what is out there with regards to the poor uh, the, the if you take a graph and look at the poor uh, before the ascent of Chavez and after Chavez came into power the national I don't remember the name of the organization that rates these things actually said that the poor they their their, their wage went up their standard of living went up and their poverty level uh, went down how do you um, Come on, you can do it. You can do it. <laughs> Mi, eh, is that true or not? ¿Eso es cierto o no? No, no es cierto. No es cierto. Okay, so how, how did we fool the international organizations? Nosotros tenemos varias etapas dentro de la historia uh -huh. de Chávez. Son 20 años. O sea, right. no es un, eh, un periodo de 5 años que podemos evaluar. We have a lot of different periods that we can evaluate with Chávez. So let me ask the question again. Uh, was there, and, uh, and what I try to do is this, right? We know that there are a lot of people that come into power with good intentions and they did well and, and uh, for a while and then power got to them and when power gets to them power corrupts doesn't happen to everybody My, uh, to Omar Torrijos Herrera which was a mm. dictator of Panama I consider him actually a good dictator because what he did is he went into the around the, he did a lot of things that Chavis, Chavez said right but actually we can see the results we can see La Represa Bayano we can see a lot of different things that were created within the interior of the country whereas only Panama City was taken care of before and Colón was forgotten well Colón is still forgotten but a lot of other towns are um, taken care of isn't it true that that Chavez initially came in with good intentions, and not only that, but that he was successful in what he did with the poor for a while? Previo, no hay ni buenos ni malos dictadores, solo son dictadores. No oh. hay ningún buen dictador. L let me let me correct that. She said a dictator can never be good. Um, l let me put it this way: uh, a, a you should. I believe in democracy. Yo creo en democracia. <laughs> me too. Okay? But uh, if 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 for some reason where I have no control, somehow a dictator takes over, I would hope that it's a benevolent dictator and not a bad one. So I'm not saying I'm not saying that I like dictatorship. No estoy diciendo que quiero la dictadura. No, no, no. Yo te yo But te I'm entendí. Saying, right. Porque en Venezuela hubo un dictador que era Marco Pérez Jiménez, Marco Pérez Jiménez que yes. hizo muchas obras y que le debemos. De, de hecho, la Universidad Central fue creada por Marco Pérez Jiménez. Uh -huh. Eh, pero gracias eh, pero a la final cometieron demasiadas arbitrariedades porque el poder no puede estar en manos de uno And she solo said that, yes, they, the, Venezuela themselves had a dictator that did pretty good uh, good things as well but ultimately uh, when you have power in one person's hand it's a problem and I agree with that sí. but I want to answer your question about how Chavez handled the poverty and how in, because they no be, I have okay. but wait John yes. my, my most important question however is not I mean I we are all slanted todos tenemos una inclinación and the inclination is usually uh, just Chavez bad good as opposed to look I, I like to look at things through different levels of indirections I, I like to look at things that says 
people are not all bad. You know, if yeah, they're not all I, bad. I don't want to say that Chavez was good or bad. I, I would like to change to judge him by the results. The results are terrible. But let me explain you about if he in some moment he did something good for the poor. Right. And let me do it. Let me explain you what Chavez did. Did he do something good for the poor or not? Let me explain you what yeah. he did and you tell me if it's was it good or was okay, it wrong. Sure. I'll take it. What he did. He started a, a war against the industry, mm -hmm. a war against what he call the oligarchy, mm -hmm. the owners of companies, business people, everybody that was not his government or poor was the enemy. Mm -hmm. So, and he started confiscating businesses. He started confiscating, uh, I mean, uh, coffee companies, uh, cement companies, uh, newspapers, uh, media, everything, saying that they were the guilty, and because of them, the poor were poor, and he was rescuing, saving the poor from the oligarchy. Right. Okay. Let me so, and, and at the same time, he created eight mm -hmm. helps, uh, money for the old people, money for the young people, money for... Uh, I don't understand. What do you mean by that? Like he just gave them money? Yes. Yeah, in no, that's ways. not good. Yeah, go ahead. He, he, he called it then Las Misiones. Right. So it was different instrument that actually is documented that Fidel Castro was the one that created the missions, Las Misiones. Uh -huh. The way that Chavez was the good one giving money to the people in, in different instruments. And, at the, and disassembling the production system of the country, taking over companies, business, everything. And because he had so much money coming from oil, all this money that people received from the government was added for the United Nations considered all those transfers from the, the government the as poor. income. It, what it, which it was. Which it was. So when, when you analyze per national income yes. per capita, that increased. So, okay, poverty is going down. Yes. Income is going better. So, the poor are the poor now are better with Chavez. What happened when the oil price came down? True. Then Chavez didn't have money to continue, and then there were no businesses to give jobs. So and what what he did was destroying the possibility that the people do well by themselves. They he created a slave of the government of his government. So. He thought that the oil was going to be there forever. I don't know what he thought. No, look, that there, the, 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 the factual is, in the moment that the oil price went down, everything destroyed. Now, let me tell you, uh, uh, John, and I, I, see, I see what you're saying, okay? And, and I agree that you don't... Uh, you know who Andrew Yang is, right? He's running for president of the United States right now. And he believes in something called the uh, basic, the universal basic income. That is in which there's a low point. A government gives everybody, because we have an economic system created by people, the government gives, uh, and there's some tests that are, that are running. I went to Netroots Nation and did several interviews on this. The government gives a base amount of money so that nobody uh, you know, lives in abject poverty. But not enough that you don't want to go out there and work and you don't want to go out there and, and make something of yourself. Yeah, to try to keep them motivated to, to effort, for effort. Right, so uh, I'm, uh, my question to you here then is, was Chavez instituting a basic income or was Chavez buying loyalty? Me puedes contestar. Totalmente, totalmente. El no se comprar eh, lealtades, ah. si es la palabra. Compró lealtades en los países de América Latina, eso fue evidente. It was evident that he bought loyalty from the countries outside of the, the Y en principio, line. yo pienso que era lo que estamos hablando. Había un mal manejo de la economía, no tenía las los asesores y él no hicieron bien el trabajo y lo que hacían era regalar el dinero. He said what, what, no, what she thinks was the original problem is yes, Chavez was just there giving away money without any recourse. Era demasiado dinero. It was just too much. 
era demasiado dinero y justamente lo que se hizo fue desperdiciar en lugar de crear instituciones, eh, crear fuentes de trabajo, incentivar a las empresa, la empresa privada no se incentivó. The biggest problem was there was not incentivation in to the private industry to make people hubo, hubo odio hacia la, al sector productivo. Okay, I, I want to get into that subject about the about odio about the hate for corporations etc because a lot of people would listen to politics done right and think that I'm a hater of corporations or I'm a hater of the private sector of our which is not the case at all. What I am a hater of Or, or corporations that in effect have created a slavery of employees. They're, they're, and, and, and that exists. Mm -hmm. So when people tell me that Chavez closes a cement company or he closes an almacén or closes something, my first question... Supermarket chain. Supermarket it chain. to every level. Okay. I, you know, I, that's right. I've never believed in uh, the, the government taking over the means of production. That's not what uh that's not the type of economy i think can work or that any of the people that i hang with uh think can work we believe in private uh, uh what i call private enterprise in other words industriality right in other words if you want to create a, 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 a job you do you have the ability to do so you do it the problem we have right now and you and i have spoken about this before is our corporatocracy that we have today is pretty much a slave holder. And that is what we need to get away from. And Chavez looks appealing to a lot of folks, or looked appealing to many of us, in fact, because it was like, finally somebody who could stick it to guys that we just can't get around. Yeah, it's a speech. It's like Bernie Sanders. Bernie has a very good speech about what the 1% or corporation network. But it's true. Yes. Uh, let me not, don't give you an opinion about the U.S. politics that I, do, I still not don't know sure of, deeply. Yeah, right. But uh, but I understand that there might be a concern in do, in Bernie Sanders and, and any all of you about how some networks of corporations could control citizens, control consumers, control empl employees. Right. But that wasn't the situation in Venezuela. And that is why I want, Chavez, that's what I want when, to when learn Chavez from you. When says yeah. that, and you here in the U.S., you hear it, you say, of course. Right. Because you are, you, are, <laughs> yeah. you are hearing that from your point of view. In Venezuela, we really didn't have a very well-developed industry or private sector. We are still in a development country. What we had is a few good companies as Polar Food, as Alfonso Rivas y Compañía, as uh, Family company. Family companies <laughs> that actually the best job, the best salary mm -hmm. that you could get in Venezuela is to work for those private companies. Let me ask you a question. Much here, better I than working you. for I, government. I believe you. But but, and, and those family business as because they were symbols of the economy and symbols of of development because Gears those working. company 60 70 years ago were a family business right. so and they grew and they, it was a symbol of how you can do good working hard i don't know why but Chavez hate that symbol because it was like co competition to his image It, it was an ego situation. I don't know if you no, understand how uh, ego yeah, like yeah, I know, but, but so, here's... So, you, we didn't have this plutocracy, you know... Because we do have a plutocracy in the States. Exploiting yeah. the employees. That wasn't. Chavez had that imaginary speech against an enemy that we didn't okay, see. Okay, let me stop so you a second. This guy, who is this guy talking to? Okay, let me stop you a second. Because, I, I, and again, one of the things that I do at this program, right, is I don't just take... Uh, I've been speaking to you just like I've been speaking to Chavistas. I believe everybody, you should make up your mind based on having accurate information. You're telling me that in as far as you're concerned, Venezuela never really had a plutocracy in the manner that the Americans we never, have a... No. We never got to that level. No. Never. Uh, no. Okay, Let, let's... Um, don't you have oil companies that are Venezuelan before it was taken over by... Um, it was a, no, it was owned by the government. 
PDVSA, no. ah. una sola. But antes de PDVSA, before the national uh, PDVSA, there was... Eh, la, el nacional, la, la nacionalización del petróleo That's la hizo petróleo. Carlos Andrés Pérez. That's what I, that you remember I always talked to you about mm -hmm. Carlos Andrés Pérez. Uh, Carlos Andrés Pérez is the one who nationalized... 1970... 1978. But before that... There were the, the oligarchs that controlled your oil, right? No. no. The, that speech is, is just doesn't apply with us. Okay. We had international companies, right. Shell, uh, uh, Epson Mobiles, or, or different right. uh, European or the U.S. Right. companies that had exploitation agreements with the government. Mm -hmm. The, I remember Romulo Betancourt with the half, half and half or 50-50 agreement. So from the exploitation, 50% for the country, 50% for the company. The company puts all the investment. The country only receives the best royalties. The royalties. Right. So that we had that agreement. Then in 1978, Uh, Carlos Andrés Pérez mm -hmm. was like one of these parties may no now we don't have any transnational 100. it's going to be used or run by the state run by the government mm -hmm. and they created P PDVSA. PDVSA so it was a state company run by Chavez so we didn't no, have no no that was before Chavez yeah yes then, was when Chavez got, was right. when very, Chavez, very uh, very professional very company. professional organized symbol of efficiency that what you're saying PDVSA was a symbol of efficiency yes before Chavez to you is, Venezuela has always been sitting on top of a pool of oil please explain to me why in Venezuela you still had that wealth disparity with all that oil that you're sitting on why is it that only a few people really benefited from all that oil what is the reason why there's a lot of poverty in Venezuela in the first place and this was before Chavez yes la corrupción en primer lugar de Steve. los políticos ok Fue, era una la corrupción de todos el no el no el, el no respetar la cosa el bien común eh, el desangramiento de la patria Chávez no nace solo Chávez no es Chávez producto de una situación política que existía en el país and that is I think you we've circled exactly to the genesis the start of what I tried to say that Chávez was nothing more than a problem within the country where you know there were poor people even though you're sitting on so much richness not only oil but now gold Yes, yeah. and and uh, Chavez, as I said, was the winner in a com in a, in an election with three outsiders. Right. Because the voters wanted something new, somebody new, because we were convinced that the current politicians were all corrupt and they were they were creating poverty mm -hmm. and all the results. The sad story is that even that Chavez was a great speaker. Yeah, had a very, you know, uh, ear-dropping uh, uh, story to tell. The result, what Chavez really did, was worse than the previous. So, you know, the, the previous, there was two parties. Right. Acción Democrática, AD. A right. Members of the party the were called action, yeah. ADECOS. So, I like to say that Chavez was the worst ADECO of all times. <laughs> he, he ended up being the same, stealing, he learned everything from right. the previous, with a very good speech on TV, and then doing business as usual and worse. And right now, what they did is they stole everything. They not only stole oil, now they, they allowed drug trafficking, They are taking minerals from from well, Amazonia. I know Russia is, is selling some of your gold, getting some of your gold. So yeah. at the end, la electricidad. The electricity, yeah. Se invirtió tantos millones de dólares en electricidad so y Venezuela no tiene. And now we don't have any. Nada. No, no. All that money wasn't invested. They they right. took the money and actually, and you got to a point. Parties in the opposition are also part of the corruption. Right. So that's why the Venezuelan citizen right now. Then that's why maybe why Maduro is still in power because they don't have an option because the opposition is also part of the same corruption complot. Right. The business. So, 
So it's not Maduro is still there not because he has any he, any support. Maybe ten percent or seven percent, as she says. No, everybody hates Maduro. Some people is still have good remindings from Chavez, and he's dead, and every dead is is cool. But Maduro, nobody likes him. But you know what? The the opposition is it's not just better. Bad, yeah. right. So we are Venezuelans voters or citizens are just trapped in a situation that they have a dictator that is Maduro that just took uh, he stole the election and he said, you know, I continue and that's it. And on the other side, they have an opposition that is trying to follow the constitution with the interim president. But the interim president is a young guy, not not, not actually with an own plan. He right. just controlled by the opposition parties. And the opposition parties and the same dinosaurs of the past that they are not proposing anything that coming back to the power to do the same that Chavez was doing so at the end we are still with that mess because we are not proposing a new deal no, let like, me, like like some model so what do we do now with Venezuela well you to, know in America we have two people proposing a new deal okay uh, Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. They are, I mean, right now our country, meaning America, our country now, all, yes. we're all yes. Latinos, <laughs> but I mean, uh, they're proposing, they, they have proposals to fix the mess. A lot of what you talk about with Maduro, we don't have it, we don't have that kind of a problem, but we do, ha we have economic problems that uh, for, for, in the case of America, are horrendous as well for the middle class and the poor. And we have two candidates, I, I say only two candidates, that, that have a solution or that, that are proposing solutions that if people get behind them, I think would be okay. My question to you as, as far as Venezuela is concerned, you're telling me that the opposition right now is not even as good, uh, it's just as bad as Maduro. Well, what? I, I don't oh, well, know. I, 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 know, I know but it's, a, it's, it's a competition bad. of the who is the less worse. But my question is, so what then? Are you saying it's you? Uh, Venezuela is a rich country sitting down on a massive amount of minerals, oil, more oil than any other country on the planet. Minerals are, are washed in minerals, not only gold but quite a bit more. What then Or for Venezuela? Yes. Yo pienso, no, yo sí pienso que toda la oposición no es mala. Hay algunos like elementos que son distorsionadores. Some of the elements are distortionist. Y por supuesto hace, hace ese efecto. No hay efecto de unidad cuando se, porque efectivamente hay que unir para que el país salga adelante se tienen que unir los there's, chavistas disidentes mm -hmm. con, lo, lo, con la oposición que tenemos. She's saying there's no unity among any of the factions and what we really need is for the, chav, the, the ex, ex chavistas and the, the other loyalists to, to come together and form a country. Now, are, you, are, are the people outside of the country like you guys? I mean, here's the deal. Uh, it does, it, uh, a lot of people think the country is bad, both the poor and the wealthy and, and the otherwise. You guys were able to pick up, do something with some of the assets that you had and leave the country. Most Venezuelans can't do that. Who's going to help the Venezuelans at home right now? At home? <laughs> you know, those things don't have an answer. So, uh, so, but let it me has explain, to have an answer. Let me explain you something because she, she got to a point. The Venezuelan situation is complex. Right. Opposition. Juan Guaidó, for example, right. is part of a generation of new politicians that five, seven years ago, they were the hope of the citizens that this new generation mm -hmm. was going to create a new deal, a new proposal. They want to not only go with a different parties, but also a different model to propose. But the unity, the ask for the unity of the parties is terrible. So the unity is handled by the, what I call the dinosaurs. Right. She calls the... Uh, the F Factores distorsionantes. Fact yeah. So these, these people, Henry Ramos Salud, Manuel Rosales, uh, 
politicians with many years that they come from the corruption previous Chavez. Right. They have been 20 years living with Chavez. They are millionaires. You don't know how they live, how they, they have all the money. Why? Corruption. And now, because they are the wise, the old guys, they control the young guys. Right. And people, as Guaido, is, is some kind manipulated by these factors. The only solution for Venezuela that, that I see close is that the new factors, young people from 20 years to 90 years, pe young people because we thought in new ideas, mm -hmm. in going away from corruption, in building a new deal of ideas, get together, kick some asses in Chavismo, kick some asses in the opposition, mm -hmm. and we call the dissident Chavistas to work together in a new proposal for Chavistas the country. Means, well, you guys are not dissident Chavistas. Never. I was never Chavista. But in, in 2000, mm -hmm. Chavez got to have 80% It's a lot of people. 80% <laughs> approval. Right now, Maduro has, let's say, 10%. Right. So there is a 70% of the people that in some moment has sympathy by Chavez that now is in the opposition. Right. And in the opposition, the leaders are the people that Chavez was fighting against. So these people said, I cannot support these the dinosaurs. You know, I have been against them since Chavez, and now that I am also against Maduro, now that I am realized that everything was wrong and I want something new, the opposition says, you gotta support Ramusalup, and you gotta support these people that is the old days. So we are trapped in this moment. Okay, so we don't have a lot of time. Yes. How do you get out of that trap? ¿Cómo salimos de esa trap? Yo pienso que con un pañuelo blanco, uh -huh. taparnos la nariz, reunirnos todos los que no estamos de acuerdo con lo que está pasando, políticos actuales, políticos anteriores, chavistas que no quieren esto, todo el mundo después se arreglará lo que se tenga que arreglar, pero tenemos que, es en conjunto, con, con la diversidad, crear la unidad. So with diversity we must bring everybody together, ex chavistas, all the other folks together, uh, and that is how we are going to make that start to get moving forward. But my question to you again, uh, Mildred. With, with the plan. Yeah, with that, yes. yeah, my, my question, Mildred, is who is going to be the leader that tries to get all these oppositions together? In este momento, in este momento, Guido. Right now, she thinks the only person that. Él cuenta con el apoyo de más de 50 países y, eh, y cuenta con el eh, es el liderazgo que tenemos ahora. She is thinking that that has to be Guido and you, Aja. I think that yes, Juan is the even institutionally speaking, he's a constitutional figure. He was the president of the Congress. He was an elected congressperson. As, as the president of the Congress and as Maduro stole the election, Maduro is not the president anymore, so he is an interim president. And he is the one that is called for to lead the process. What, what he needs to do is kicking asses. He needs to get rid of the, these dinosaurs guys, that the corruption, he needs to definitely call ex-Chavistas that are not delinquent, because what we cannot is you to invite the delinquent in and lead the process. So far, we don't see Juan doing it. So far, he's been handled Again, so by who, them. Who can do that? He's the only one right now, constitutionally right now. speaking. Right. Any, any other way is a force way. It's something from the military, something from Which the you US. Don't want. No, and I, I don't see this. Okay. And we don't see this. Well, look, folks, it was a pleasure speaking to John and Mildred, <laughs> those Venezolanos, two Venezuelans, talking us a little, kind of in, enlightening us about the other side of Venezuela, probably the side that we don't usually hear a lot of here, and I wanted to bring John in and bring Mildred in. It was my pleasure having both of you. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics Done Right, and you guys know how I end this baby. I am what? Out? Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Williams. This is the progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. 
Whether you are liberal, conservative, or otherwise, you get to air your point of view. Remember, you can also send me a tweet to E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S, that is, at Egberto Willie. Let us engage. It is politics done right. One, two, three, four.